Welcome to the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft Preview Show presented by Kia, powering the future of hockey. My name is Taylor Roca. I'm the Director of Communications for the Western Hockey League. And joining me today to help tee up the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft is our local Bantam Draft expert, Zach Hodder, Manager of Player Development for the Western Hockey League. Hey, Taylor. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, all things considered, I suppose, given that, uh, you know, we're, we're in unprecedented circumstance, unprecedented times here. And, uh, you know, as a result, the WHL Bantam Draft uh, is going to be conducted online in a digital setting. Uh, you know, most years we're used to being in a big open conference hall. Uh, you know, we've got 22 teams. We've got dozens and dozens of scouts and, uh, you know, scouting personnel in the room conducting the draft. So this year's a little bit different. And, you know, we're looking ahead to – April 22nd, 10 a.m. when the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft gets underway. And, um, you know, instead of the regular live event, we're looking at a live stream that you and I are going to host on on Wednesday. And uh, it's going to get underway at 9.30 with a little bit of preview uh, info for people that morning just to kind of set things up. So I'm excited because we're getting to do something different and it's fun. Uh, but at the same time, it's not what we're used to and it's it's obviously not what the clubs are used to. So it's a little bit of a different time. Absolutely. I think the thing I'm going to miss most is, uh, you know, we have a tremendous breakfast that morning, that Thursday morning of the draft. And, uh, you know, I just can't make the same quality of food uh, here at my apartment. But it's it's interesting. It's difficult for our teams to um, to be able to get all of your scouts in one area is not going to be possible. So there's going to be lots of conference calls for all of our teams. Uh, and then everything's done online. So uh, it's different, but we've adjusted and, and that's just the way the world is right now. We got to, we got to be able to adapt. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Absolutely. So uh, why don't we get right into things where we're at right now, as we prepare for 10 AM on Wednesday is uh, we actually already have one player off the board essentially, which is completely unprecedented in the Western Hockey League. Uh, Connor Bedard signed his WHL standard player agreement with the Regina Pats on Tuesday. And uh, essentially the Pats have said, look, we have the intention to take him first overall. We hold the first overall pick. Let's just get this done and out of the way. Uh, you know, Connor Bedard is an exceptional player and that's not an overstep in saying that. So, you know, Zach, what can you tell us about Connor Bedard? What can you tell us about this quite unique situation that, uh, you know, we find ourselves in heading into the WHL Bantam draft? He's an exceptional player. Uh, it's as simple as that. He, he scored 84 points this year as an underage player playing in the midget prep division of the Canadian Sports School Hockey League. Everything he does is elite. I mean, he's a guy, too, that when you watch him play from September till the end of the season, he is already the best player on the ice, and he's noticeably better by the end of the season. Uh, you talk to his coaches at West Van Hockey Academy, and they talk about his commitment to hockey, his commitment to his own development, and how he understands that, that there's things he needs to do to continue that development. He needs to be working on specific things after practice. He needs to be uh, in the gym or working out, uh, getting bigger, getting faster, and getting stronger. And he really takes that to heart from everything I've heard from his coaching staff. Now, I can tell you that the guys I played with that went on to play in the NHL, they had that exact same mindset. So for Connor Bedard, as a 15-year-old to jump in the Western Hockey League, it's not an easy adjustment. But from everything that we've heard and obviously all the due diligence that Hockey Canada has done, he is the first player from Western Canada that they think is able to make this jump. It's a first in Western Hockey League history that we'll see a, a player have having been granted exceptional player status. Connor Bedard has that. Uh, and, you know, with the signing of the uh, of his WHL standard player agreement, folks in Regina have a lot to be excited about heading into 2020-21. As much as Connor Bedard is kind of the top of the class and now is obviously off the board given what happened on Tuesday, uh, there's still two excellent players that, you know, by all accounts seem to fall right behind him when it comes to a lot of people's draft lists and rankings. Uh, you know, what can you tell us about, you know, those two stars that we expect to come out of Saskatchewan? Two players that were granted exception to play in the Midget Trip Play League in Saskatchewan this year were uh, Riley Height and uh, Braden Yeager. And these two players have been playing together for the past three seasons. I mean, these are also two very good, very offensive forwards that can create, play very well together, can score 
but both play the game with incredible hockey IQ. My understanding is that this draft class is actually incredibly deep beyond that as well. So why don't we start out West, work our way East and uh, you know, just maybe give us a little bit of a rundown or a sense of, of what else people can expect coming out of each province. So uh, let's start with British Columbia. Yeah, so there's been a, a recent trend lately of uh, Kamloops players moving to the Yale Hockey Academy in Abbotsford and uh, playing their last couple years of minor hockey uh, with the Yale Hockey Academy Lions. This year, their captain, a uh, defenseman by the name of Tanner Molendick, he's an incredible defensive defenseman with great offensive upside. Uh, I really think that he is going to be a Ryan Murray in the Western Hockey League. He's very smart. He's a great skater. He plays the game very well. Uh, also on that Yale hockey team is a, an undersized forward who might have the most hockey IQ in the draft, a, a guy by the name of Zach Benson. He was the MVP of the Canadian Sports School Bantam Prep League this year. He's a tremendously gifted player offensively. He does everything really well, but his ability to think the game at the level he does, uh, it, it much exceeds uh, a Bantam-level player where he is right now. Let's move east. We'll head into Alberta. Uh, Alberta obviously has a real strong history at the WHL Bantam draft. Uh, you know, we've actually seen four straight years, which will be broken this year, but four straight years of first overall picks coming up out of Alberta. Uh, what I do think will change is there's not going to be as many first round picks this season coming in over Alberta. Uh, one of those guys who will be going in the first round, though, uh, is a defenseman. He also played midget AAA this year, uh, Mazden Leslie. Uh, he's a physical, probably the most physical defenseman uh, available in the first round for teams to select, but he has great offensive upside. He skates the puck very well. He's got a great job from the point. Uh, he can create offense, but he's also very good defensively. So you're getting a guy that can do it at both ends of the ice uh, who's going to transition very well into the Western Hockey League at 16 years old. Uh, another defenseman, this is going to be a defense-heavy draft. Uh, Austin Zemlak to me is a complete defenseman all around. Um, he moves the puck up ice very well, but what impresses me most about him is his consistency in this game. I mean, if you, if you go watch him in a tournament, he's as good on day one as he is on day three. Uh, he's a very, very talented defenseman. Uh, he was on a weaker team this season at OHA uh, Edmonton, but he was the captain of that team. He was expected to do a lot. And I think he lived up to the expectations. So expecting another strong crop out of Alberta as we do every year, uh, heading east to the land of living skies, as I like to say, uh, Saskatchewan. We've already talked about a couple of the real high-end guys um, that'll lead off the draft class coming out of Saskatchewan, but what can you tell us about the group to follow? Well, Saskatchewan has a very good group this year. Uh, I think one of the guys who I think you can even put in with those other two Saskatchewan players is Kalen Lind, a younger brother, a former Kelowna Rocket, current Vancouver Canucks prospect, Cole Lind. Uh, Kalen Lind also was looking to play in the Midget AAA League this year in Saskatchewan. He wasn't given permission to play. And what he ended up doing was coming back to the Saskatchewan Bantam AA League and absolutely tearing it up. In 27 games, he had over 120 points, uh, along with 90 penalty minutes. So, you know, this isn't just a guy who likes to score. This is a guy who likes to mix it up. I think he has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, and he is looking like he is primed to be a very high pick who comes into training camp and competes very hard. He's a very competitive player, and that's something that's very hard to teach, but it's something that all of our teams are looking for. Another player who, just like I talked about with Zemla, could be a first, later first-round pick that develops into a very good Western Hockey League player is Sam Orbenga. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, from uh, <laughs> Regina. Uh, he's another guy who put up over 120 points in the Saskatchewan Bantam AA Hockey League. He's big. He skates fast. He shoots the puck hard. He drives to the net. He does a lot of things that in the Western Hockey League you need to do to be able to create offense. And he's a guy that in the Saskatchewan Bantam AA League doesn't get a lot of competition, but he played hard every single game and he competes really well, captain of his team. I think he could be a guy that uh, is a really good steal for one of our teams. So the last province in our Western Canadian territory, we head to Manitoba, the Keystone province. Uh, Zach, you know, last year we saw Connor Geeky go second overall, as, as you've alluded to. He stays in his home province with the Winnipeg Ice and obviously is a a very highly touted prospect for them moving forward. What can we expect coming out of Manitoba in 2020? 
In Manitoba this season, uh, it's a unique group of players. One of those guys is Jaden Perron from the Winnipeg Warriors. He's a smaller, skilled forward with exceptional puck skills, especially in close quarters. So when he's along the boards, he's, again, a smaller guy. You're going to be up against bigger defensemen. But when you're good in small spaces and you're able to use your size and your edge work to get you out of those uh, those tight corners and those physical plays, you can create a lot of offense from below the goal line. That's something Ron does very well. He's a quiet leader, and he puts up great numbers. But there's another guy in Manitoba who somehow even put up more impressive numbers, and that's Braden Dubé from the Parkland Rangers. Uh, Dubé put up 130 points, including 74 goals in 36 games, uh, which are insane numbers for even a Bantam hockey player to score. But what Dubé does really well is, is he sees the ice So he knows when he has the best opportunity to score or when he has the best opportunity for one of his teammates to score. He draws in players and then he finds the open man. Uh, He's a leader on and off the ice. He loves to score. But again, this is a guy with high hockey IQ. He's going to make the teammates around him better. Uh, he's not a selfish player, but he's definitely a guy that is going to be, you know, a number one uh, center whenever he gets to the Western Hockey League. So certainly sounds like at the top of the draft, we've got a number of names to look out for from across all four provinces. And, uh, you know, anticipation is certainly very high heading into Wednesday. But Zach, you know, we've only talked about a handful of players here, and it, it goes without saying that this is a deep draft. And there are a lot of other guys that we could have spent a lot of time on. Unfortunately, we're just limited when it comes to that. Yeah, this is a draft with a ton of wealth. I mean, I think if you look at the top 50, you can't really go wrong with any of those players. Once you get to the Western Hockey League, you're going to have the opportunity to really see, you know, explosive development. And for this draft, I mean, there are so many tremendous hockey players that do so many things so well that we're going to have probably more than one or two steals later in this draft as we continue on. Again, there are so many good prospects in this draft we weren't able to talk about today. Now, I know you had a chance to talk with Josh Morrissey earlier this week, and uh, you know there are some important messages for people to remember in and around any draft day, particularly the Bantam draft day. Obviously, it's an important day for everyone involved, but there are some key things to remember. So what can you tell us about that? You know, when I was talking to Josh, um, who was a former teammate of mine when we were in Prince Albert together, he was a guy that went sixth overall in the Western Hockey League Bantam draft. He went 13th overall in the NHL entry draft. When I asked him about his Bantam draft experience and getting to the Western Hockey League, he said it was just an invite to training camp. I had to earn my spot on that team. I had to work for that spot on my team. And he said, I think everybody who goes through this draft process needs to understand that it doesn't matter if you go – Six overall, 66 overall, or undrafted, at the end of the day, you're all competing for a chance at the same roster opportunity. You're still competing for that chance, for that uh, training camp invitation. That's all it is at the end of the day. The draft is one day in your evaluation process. The draft doesn't determine the type of player you are. You do. And you can't even play in the Western Hockey League next season. So with that being said, I think – for, for the players that are watching this draft and the families who are, who are participating in this draft, really understand that this is just one day. Over 25% of Western Hockey League rosters are made up of players who are never drafted in the Western Hockey League Bantam draft. I think it's really important to remember that you just need to continue to focus on what you need to do to continue your development as a hockey player and as a person to help you achieve the goals that you've set for yourself. So, for everybody who's getting ready for the Bantam draft, um, good luck. Uh, I, I, you know, I hope it goes well, but if it doesn't, just remember, it's one day and you get to determine the type of player you are. My favorite example that I, I love to provide year after year as we do these things, um, Jerome McGinley. Jerome McGinley went unselected in the WHL Bantam draft and went on to, A, have a fantastic Western Hockey League career, Uh, You know, he won championships, Memorial Cups with the Kamloops Blazers, and then happened to go on and become a pretty okay NHL player, I suppose, when you consider the entire scope of his career, and he's probably going to end up in the Hockey Hall of Fame. So it's certainly not the end of the road. There is plenty of opportunity to come, and uh, it's, it's a very important thing to remember. That's 
that's all we have, I think, for, for our preview show today. Um, we're, we're running pretty long here already. But, uh, you know, just want to remind everybody again, Wednesday, April 22nd, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. That's when the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft officially gets underway. Zach and I will go live at whl.ca and on YouTube uh, with our live streaming coverage of the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft starting at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. So we'll rehash a little bit of what we did today. Uh, you know, we'll be ready to go and, and providing some live analysis and commentary throughout the first round of the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft as it carries through. So, uh, you know, we thank you for tuning in here today. We look forward to having you with us on Wednesday. And, um, you know, all the best to the players and families involved. Thanks for tuning in to the 2020 WHL Bantam Draft Preview Show presented by Kia, powering the future of hockey.